Well, welcome back to the uh, afternoon session um, in this uh, FDP. And uh, this is uh, now the talk is on positional astronomy, and this is one of the most important. Uh, though in the morning there was stellar uh, physics, but uh, stellar physics is uh, uh, about understanding the physical aspect, and that is one of the fundamental subjects. But to gateway to learning astronomy and quantizing the observation is positional astronomy, and this is uh, one of the most important. Uh, session which you will be having in this full FDP. So uh, I hope you will uh, appreciate this and uh, for this particular session we have with us Dr. Ravi Kiran um, and uh, uh, Dr. Ravi Kiran is the director of uh, Jawahar Planetarium Allahabad and he is also the head of the Jawahar Lal Nehru uh, Memorial Fund Allahabad. And uh, he takes care of the scientific and administrative activities uh, which includes uh, show productions uh, uh, using uh, planetarium specialized softwares. Then he also teaches MSc students in astronomy and astrophysics at Osmania University and he has uh, around uh, uh, a vast experience in teaching field as well as in the planetarium field. He has published several uh, research papers and uh, he has worked uh, in in, uh, apart from uh, teaching job, he has also worked at Nehru Planetarium in New Delhi, Brilla Planetarium in Hyderabad and now he is in the Jawaharlal Planetarium in Allahabad. And he has conducted several uh, workshops in astronomy and uh, he is an ardent uh, popularizer of astronomy and conducts several uh, sky observation program and amateur astronomers meet. And he is also specialized in uh, writing planetarium show script for the entire show and designing the show. Um, he has a PhD in binary stars uh, and uh, he has an MSc in astronomy uh, from Osmania University, Hyderabad. So we have a, a very eminent speaker and uh, I request Dr. Ravi Kiran to uh, please start the talk. Thank you, Jayant. I'm sorry that uh, I have to take some 10, 15 minutes out of your time for all these uh, problems that we had. So positional astronomy is uh, something dealing with the observational astronomy. It is used to locate the astronomical objects in the sky. That means, uh, suppose we are standing on the earth and when we look into the sky, we see innumerable number of stars, we see stars, galaxies, everything that are there, moon is there, sun is there, when sun sets we see the stars, so on. But suppose uh, one way of uh, look, uh, looking at the stars is just keep your head uh, towards the sky and you find lot of stars. But how to identify these stars, that is very important, suppose you know you have seen one star, say Sirius or some star, uh, say one constellation, you have seen Cancer in the sky. You want to know when it will be visible, at what time, from what place. Okay, so for these kind of things, the observational astronomy, the positional astronomy is important. That means you want to locate them. Uh, earlier itself you want to know at, at what time they rise in the sky and what time they set all these things for knowing there are some mathematical methods uh, uh, linked with the spherical geometry so those all things we will see and we also will try to calculate uh, sidereal time we will see uh, what are the this uh, some points are there like zenith, nadir, these are small things but sidereal time, what is sidereal time and how do you find the sidereal time for any given place at given time, all these things then how we will link them to the star maps, I will also give you northern maps, I will share them with you, whatever I can share, I will uh, share it in the, the whatsapp group. Uh, Northern maps I will share. I will also share one uh, spherical uh, uh, astronomy, one uh, uh, geometry book of SMART that also I will share and then uh, PDF copy and 
maybe uh, as yesterday arvind was suggesting this is not the thing I, that i should share because see i can I, may, I can talk about the things but whatever the pictures that you see in the in my uh, slide show uh, presentation they are not my made things so it's not i don't want to share it on my name so whatever i have done some sidereal time calculations those things also i'll share it with you so first of all what is a celestial sphere it is like the earth is in the shape of a sphere so when you stand on the earth and when we see into the sky we find that the entire sky is in the form of a sphere so the observer is in the center of the sphere and all the things that are there are on the celestial sphere celestial sphere is nothing but an imaginary sphere on which observer is the center and all the celestial objects are considered to lie on the celestial sphere the distances do not matter here it's like suppose you have moon you have uh, venus you have some other object say jupiter and you have uh one star and beside a star you have a galaxy so uh, on the sphere it appears like they are all side by side it is only the angular measures that we require on the celestial sphere the distances are not considered on this sphere yes sun moon planets galaxies all the objects are part of the celestial sphere and they move on the sphere they move on the sphere the movement is uh, due to the rotation of the earth all these objects they rise in the east and set in the west because of the diurnal motion and uh, some objects like comets like you have seen in the morning lecture the comets also come in a path and they have their own movement yes so here we study first of all little spherical astronomy why spherical astronomy is required is as i said the the sky is in the form of a sphere so astronomy that is dealing with the sphere is spherical astronomy and uh, little about celestial sphere we re, we will uh, not go into the real mathematics or trigonometry of uh, celestial sphere formula but <laughs> those who are really interested they can see that smart book and learn on their own or they can ask me but uh, some equations i will be telling i will be giving you the direct formula for calculations so on the celestial sphere we have a great circle and small circles the great circle is a plane passing through the center of the sphere like if you take the earth the all the the equator the equator line is a great circle all the longitudinal lines that pass from north to south via center of the sphere the, the uh, uh, these are the arcs they are all great circles in between latitudes what you have on earth the, the latitude lines they are all small circles only the equator latitude is a great circle so any great circle is a plane passing through the center of the celestial sphere and any plane intersecting the sphere but not passing through the center they are the small circles okay this is a spherical triangle in fact uh, most of you uh, it will be difficult to understand but only thing what this spherical triangle says is spherical triangle is you take only abc the dotted lines they are all the tangents drawn and extensions and all that you forget about that if the uh, the spherical triangle is abc the small a is the uh, uh, side opposite to ab is small a similarly to bc is small b or to angle b okay side bc that is opposite to angle a is small a you have a angle a opposite side is the small a and here for c you have small c 
and D, uh, B you have small b. So there are some uh, formulas known as cosine formula, sine formula uh, and one more formula. The cosine formula says that uh, if you have this kind of triangle, cos A is equal to, there is a relation cos A is equal to cos B, cos C plus sin B, sin C, sin A, where A, small A, B, C are the sides and capital A is the angle, where angle B, A, C is angle A. Their companion formula are cos B, cos B, if you have B this side, then you have cos A, cos C, plus sin A, sin C, sin B. Similarly, cos C is cos A, cos B, plus sin A, sin B, sin C. That means, if two sides and an angle are known, it enables to calculate the third side. If three sides are known, then angles can be calculated. These are some trigonometric formula for spherical triangle. Similarly, there is a sine formula. From cosine formula, when you derive it further, you get sine capital A by small a. Capital A is the angle, small a is the side, equal to sine b by sine small b, equal to sine c by small sine c. So this formula gives relation between two sides of a triangle and two angles opposite these sides. There is one another formula known as sin small a cos b equal to cos b sin c minus sin b cos b cos a. This is the relation involving three sides and two angles. Of course, the, the, the derivations are there. I know uh, even telling these itself, people, half the people will log out uh, once you see these equations and the geometry of this, but so I am telling you only the final equations. Those who want to derive these equations, uh, they are there in the book. Okay, then another thing you need to know in trigonometry is theta is small angle and expressed in circular measure. We have sin theta equal to theta radians or one radian is equal to 57 degrees 17 minutes 45 seconds of arc it comes to and one second of arc is 1 divided by 206265 radians this number 206265 is important you might have read I think uh, Jayan sir has told about distances to stars. You get one parsec is equal to 206265 astronomical units. So how it comes is from this. One second of arc is this much radian. Another thing, the angles and time, how you have to correlate, you know, uh, Earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation on its axis that is 360 degrees. So one hour, 24 hours is 360 degrees. So one hour is 15 degrees and one minute is 15 minutes of arc. One second is 15 seconds of arc. So we normally use one hour is 15 degrees at all the places. Okay, now the celestial sphere stars are at different distances all appear to be on the celestial sphere the 88 official constellations cover the entire celestial sphere here distance is not taken into the account it is the angular separation only you tell that this star is 15 degrees away from that star so that way, only the angular separations, yesterday again Jayant sir has told how to measure the angles with the hand, you stretch your hand at 1 degree, 4 degrees, all these things are already told well. So here as I said, earth rotates, so 360 degrees by 24 hours, it comes to 15 degrees per hour. So with this 15 degrees per hour, what happens? 
all the objects in the sky they move 15 degrees uh, in arc so uh, you have 12 hours so uh, if you see some object at 7 pm those objects will be shifted 15 degrees further towards the west so earth's rotation okay most celestial objects appear to rise in the east and set in the west because earth rotates on its axis from west to east earth rotates at the rate of 15 degrees per hour yes one more aspect it has earth has actually three motions one is rotation going on its own axis and then the revolution going around the sun and the third is precision that is uh, it precises like a top the revolution is a movement of one object around another object earth revolves around the sun is elliptical orbit just as the moon revolves around the earth uh, so we all revolve around the sun in counterclockwise direction the rate of revolution is about one degree per day this one degree per day how it comes is we have 365 days it uh, takes to go on its uh, this uh, to go around the sun so 360 degrees it covers in 365 days so roughly it is one degree per day so as the earth goes around the sun the rising time of the stars change every day that means today if you are seeing one object rising at six o'clock as the earth moves one degree uh, in its orbit so the stars also move more westward and uh, it will be rising instead of 6 pm it will be rising tomorrow uh, the difference is one degree one degree corresponds to four minutes uh, so uh, the it rises tomorrow or at 5 56 instead of 6 pm stars we see in the evening of summer are entirely different from what we see in the evening of winter so we have star maps that help us to identify the constellations in the sky we also see those maps okay now uh, on earth we have longitude and latitude what is latitude latitude is measured with the, uh, the that is uh, a great circle uh, the perpendicular drawn perpendicular to the axis of the earth that is the equator comes and the parallel lines to equator are the latitudinal lines and longitude lines are from top from north to south great circles they are so we have longitudes longitudes are measured normally they, they are measured from the prime meridian prime meridian is zero degrees longitude that is uh, uh, the Greenwich Meridian it is known as okay Greenwich so Greenwich everything the time starts from Greenwich it has zero degrees longitude and for every 15 degrees it has one hour so all the times that we say normally in astronomical uh, for calculations we say UT by and of hours we deduct and when we goes to universal time and uh, India is five and a half hours ahead of UT. So five and a half hours is 82.5. So every place has a latitude and longitude. It is only that uh, like uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Cochin is 11 degrees. So uh, our, our Allahabad is uh, 25 degrees, the place where I am sitting is uh, 14 uh, 25 degrees so there is a difference of 14 degrees of latitude and longitudinal difference also will be there so um, this uh, uh, la longitude for uh, india we take 82.5 as our meridian line that is that passes through varanasi then i think kakinada in Andhra Pradesh and some places so that line so five and a half hours that we have 
and uh, that is taken as standard so we have something indian standard time if there is no indian standard time on the basis of uh, the, uh, if we have to tell on the basis of stars every place will have a different time so to standardize the time we use ist as indian standard time and that is five and a half, and a half hours ahead of greenwich yes so these are some places latitudes longitudes of different indian cities so ahmedabad alabad as i said 25 degrees then it is very close to varanasi so uh, we are one uh, just one degree uh, 5 hours 27 minutes it is then cochin uh, cochin uh, is 11 degrees and 75 degrees east so the same thing if you divide it by 15 degrees you get it in hours so 5 hours 3 minutes 7 seconds is the longitude in hours time longitude in degrees is 75.78 and latitude is 11.25 yeah trivandrum is more down you can see 8 degrees it is i think then the distance between uh, trivandrum and uh, cochin will be around 300 kilometers or so because 1 degree corresponds to we say roughly 1 degree corresponds to 110 kilometers of course it again depends upon the latitude of the place but roughly we can say 1 degree corresponds to 110 kilometers and if they are on the same longitude line uh you can say it is around 300 kilometers okay now we go you are going out into the sky you are the observer so when you will go and stand outside first of all you need really to know the directions during the day time it will be easy to tell the directions that is we say sun rises in the east sets in the west and then you stretch your arms so your right hand will be uh, towards the south uh, uh, left towards the north and back will be west so that way we can tell the directions the same thing when you go outside once the sun sets there is no uh, you won't know what is east what is west so okay when you go out and stand the top most point that is there in the sky is zenith that is the point that is totally overhead if you take a plumb line and draw the one that is going down is known as nadir and one that is going up is known as zenith yes now from the ground the sky looks like a big dome that is we see half the part of the sphere just like in planetarium you have the dome the outside also if you are horizon and places it's very clear then you can see half the sky half the sphere can be seen so you have the zenith and the plane where you are standing that is known as horizon horizon is perpendicular plane to zenith observers horizon is the one where we are standing okay now sky as a useful to think of the sky as great dome over our head the horizon is where the dome meets the earth that is our base the uh, we are standing and if we extend our uh, a perpendicular you draw from the feet that is our horizon zenith is the point directly that is overhead as the earth turns this dome turns uh, overheads it appears as if the sky is a large hollow sphere centered on the earth and we have something known as uh, meridian meridian is north south and the topmost point when we join i'll tell you how meridian is to be found but 
the one that uh, great circle joining north south via zenith this is meridian okay the stars move from east to west because the earth rotates from west to uh, east that's okay we won't go into the other details now again this is the celestial sphere north celestial pole south celestial pole horizon so here we need to find out the directions how we find out directions is with the help of the pole star pole star you know it is in the north and the north direction it gives so first you need to identify when sun is not there in the sky suppose you are standing somewhere in a dark place and you you want to identify the directions the only way you can identify is with the help of the pole star so first locate the pole star pole star can be located with the help of saptarishi or arsa major arsa major the first two stars uh, of the uh, arsa major if you draw an arc you get towards uh, the the star which is not really bright but uh, it's i think it's of second magnitude or so so that star can be seen and uh, that is the pole star so identify pole star it gives the north direction then the back gives the south stretch your arms then you get east and west once you get the pole star uh, the down on the horizon is your north not that north point pole star zenith and extend it more to the south point that will be your meridian so the entire sky can be uh, uh, you can split it into two halves the one that is in the east of meridian and one that is in the west of meridian so wherever the observer is there on the sphere wherever the observer is standing he can be standing in any way so the observer is there to him the plane that is uh, uh, perpendicular is uh, perpendicular to the poles is his horizon okay so this way we uh, we get the directions north east south west all this and all the it is generally the objects rise in the east and they set in the west so uh, it's not like all the objects exactly rise in the east and set in the west the objects that are uh, we will see that objects that are close to the equator celestial equator they rise exactly in the east and set exactly in the west so rest of the objects they also have the diurnal paths but they will be rising either rising northeast or southeast and then setting northwest or southwest so the topmost point is zenith then you have a meridian meridian is the line joining north then north uh, celestial pole <coughs> of course north celestial pole if you go to the bottom on the horizon you see that is north so north zenith and south this will be the your meridian and uh, all the stars they cross the rise in the east they cross the meridian and they set in the west it's known as transit transit means once they cross the meridian okay this is uh, maybe little later i will tell what it is so here yes now horizon is there zenith is there in the top we have meridian we have directions so suppose a star is there in the sky how we tell is how much angle above it is from the horizon that is known as the altitude 
altitude of the object is how much from the ground it is up in the sky maximum can be from your horizon to zenith is 90 degrees so the angle that is between 0 and 90 altitude can be maximum 0 when it um, 90 when it is in the zenith on zenith and 0 when it is horizon and so they are all the objects they rise with zero altitude then they go to maximum altitude as i have said it is not necessary that all the objects should reach zenith only the one that is on the equator will be going there equator or on some particular days they will be going so uh, at zero degrees on the equator they will be going so uh, they, they go to the highest point and then again the altitude keeps decreasing and then they set in the west. So altitude is one coordinate for expressing your uh, position of the star. Another position, oh, okay one more thing, altitude of pole star is equal to the latitude of the place. This is a one simple geometry is there where the north celestial pole is there, the equator and uh, you can do some calculations and tell that the latitude of the place is equal to the altitude of the pole star. That means wherever, like suppose you are at uh, uh, Cochin, the latitude is 11 degrees, so pole star will be at 11 degrees height and if you go more and more north, if you go to say Delhi, our place is 25.5 degrees, Delhi is 28.5. If you go further north, I think Amritsar is 31, 32 and top most uh, areas in Kashmir, they are up to 34. So Indian latitudes normally, I think uh, 8 is around Kanyakumari. So it goes from 8 to 34. So midpoint will be somewhere uh, between, uh, I think somewhere close to Nagpur it comes. So if we have another thing, altitude of the pole star is equal to the latitude of the place. So if you want to know the latitude of any place, now we have GPS and all that, but just measure the altitude of the pole star and you will find that its latitude. Then, yes, uh, it is a coordinate system, altitude and azimuth. Azimuth altitude, at, as I said, the height above the horizon. Maximum will be 90 and from bottom, how much it is from the horizon above. Like, pole star will be at the altitude of 11 degrees from Cochin. So, 17 degrees from Hyderabad. So, that way altitude you can tell for all the objects that are there in the sky. Azimuth, how azimuth is measured is it is 3 60 degrees measured from north towards east. So, uh, to tell uh, the coordinates of any object you need two points uh, like uh, x, y. Here you have one as altitude and one as azimuth. You can tell that the object is there in the sky, it has an altitude. You are uh, referring to some object, say right now you want to talk about the sun. Sun is, um, um, I think the time is around say 3.15. 3 o'clock, so sun means uh, 15 degrees per hour it moves, say sun is at uh, 45 degrees will be the altitude of the sun and azimuth as, uh, after the uh, meridian crossing it will be in the west. So you can say from north towards east, north uh, to south, south I think 180 degrees and little more than 180 degrees it will be azimuth. So you can tell altitude and azimuth of the objects. Okay, then uh, 
yeah, yes. So at the equator, this I think we will see later. So with the altitude of azimuth, and you, if you have the time, you can tell at 315 the altitude of star is so much, azimuth is so much. But there are some drawbacks. In fact, many telescopes also have ultra azimuth system mount where you just um, uh, tilt the telescope or uh, shift the telescope and put, uh, fix it altitude and azimuth. But the disadvantage with ultra azimuth system is that altitude varies from place to place because every star has its own path. What you find at Cochin, say uh, with reference, say the pole star itself, if you take at Cochin, you have pole star at 11 degrees altitude, whereas at uh, my place it will be uh, 25 degrees altitude. So when you are telling the altitude of your place, uh, if you find some object and say that it is say very close to pole star 5 degrees above and you say that it is 16 degrees in altitude and so many degrees in azimuth, here for me it will be totally different because your azimuth will depend upon your longitude and my azimuth will be based on my longitude. So these are totally local things. If you really want to use altitude and azimuth, they can be good for comet finding or something. If you have some other coordinates, you can convert them. If you have altitude and azimuth, say uh, uh, tonight at 10 p.m. in Cochin, if you are seeing some object which will be 20 degrees altitude and some 50 degrees uh, east azimuth, then you can say, oh, this is the way I can find. You get the north direction and then you uh, keep a circle and with that try to find out the azimuth and then from azimuth if you go into the top you will get that object some say 20 degrees, 20 degrees into the sky. But the same thing you cannot apply to people at other places. And then other thing you also have to tell the time say at 8 pm it will be this because at 9 pm the object will be moving high in the sky or it can go low in the sky and azimuth will also vary. So alta azimuth is a very local coordinate system which depends upon the position and also the time. You have to give your latitude, longitude and also you have to give the time then only you can use your coordinate system otherwise this alta azimuth otherwise this won't work well it is i will see later so yes alta azimuth coordinate system so we have seen zenith zenith is the point directly uh, above the observer 90 degrees that is top nadir is something bottom minus 90 we can't see Nadir. Nadir. Horizon is the plane. Altitude, angle above the horizon to an object. Azimuth, angle from to north to the perpendicular arc from star to horizon ranges 360 degrees. So every object has altitude and azimuth. There is something known as zenith distance also, which is nothing but 90 minus altitude. From the top, yeah, uh, you, if sun is in the, suppose some object you want to say that uh, sun is at, uh, say, during transit time, say that zenith distance of the sun is 5 degrees. You won't say that altitude is 85 degrees, but you say it is just 90 minus uh, altitude, z it is. Okay, as I said, said, the advantage easy to use system, it is often useful to know how high a star is above the horizon and in what direction it can be found. 
so many telescopes they have ultra zoom up systems uh -huh. because of the lower cost disadvantages is the coordinates given from place of observation and also it depends upon the time of observation we need better coordinate system for having altitude and as well stand so another thing that what we get is our angle our angle is something important as i said we have seen meridian what is meridian meridian is the line line joining red circle joining north to south by a zenith it's an arc goes in this way our angle is how many degrees the object is away from the uh, from the meridian in a very simple way if you have to sell it is measured from observers meridian westwards if azimuth is west our angle is 0 to 12 hours azimuth is east or 12 to 24 normally we tell our angle as say like right now the time is say 3 pm our angle uh, 3 pm is nothing but the our angle of the sun post meridian sun has crossed 3 degrees from the meridian so it has 3 more hours to go and it will set at 6 pm say so the how much away it is from the meridian will give our angle our angle is from the meridian but again meridian changes from place to place say actually we say that right now the time is 3 pm say take it as 3 pm 3 pm means sun should be 45 degrees one hour corresponds to 15 degrees so 3 pm is 45 degrees sun should be 45 degrees from the meridian 45 degrees means west of meridian so now this 45 degrees is from which place that again depends upon the longitude of the place if you are more in the east uh, the sun will be more away from the meridian it can go to 50 degrees 55 degrees it is not necessary that sun will be at noon uh, uh, sun will be on meridian at noon for place say that is a arunachal pradesh or assam or anything that is uh, in the northeast sun will rise very early it will set early so by 11 o'clock by 10:30 sun will be reaching the meridian for someone who is in gujarat or so sun will be reaching meridian very late say 1 o'clock so there is a vast difference between uh, uh, sun uh, reaching meridian time that is the transit time noon time but our angle is from the meridian how much it is away from the how much the object is away from the meridian will give our angle and our angle also depends upon the individual's longitude there is another thing known as the here the our angle see our angle how we draw is we have a meridian north uh, north south are the directions and then the topmost point is zenith so n z s is your meridian and say the star is somewhere away that angle say star is at point x then p z x that will be uh, your uh, azimuth and this how much angle it is making from the meridian so when this line p q when the star keeps moving and when p q line goes and meets prx then the our angle will be zero that way either it will be in the east of meridian the west of meridian this is one coordinate our angle second is the declination declination is one very important coordinate in the for giving any star's position the reason is that declination is measured with reference to the equator here we are getting one more point earlier 
we had zenith nadir horizon yeah then there is something known as equator equator how we get equator is you have north celestial pole it is just extension of the earth's equator into the sky so uh, extend earth's equator you get a celestial equator or another way how do we get earth's equator earth's equator is say if you draw a great circle perpendicular to the axis that is north and south you get earth's equator similarly in the sky your north point is north celestial pole so north celestial pole south celestial pole and to that you draw a great circle perpendicular you get a celestial equator so celestial equator and earth's equator are parallel and then uh, it is just you can say that this is a celestial equator is extension of the earth's equator into the sky so declination is just like we have the latitudes uh, declination is how much height it is from the equator we have say 11 degrees latitude for uh, cochin so here if a star is there from the celestial equator how much it has going up so that is a declination just like latitudes we have positive and negative like north are termed as positive and south are negative so here also we get we have positive declinations negative declinations maximum it can go to 90 so 0 to minus 90 0 to plus 90 the objects that have 0 degrees declination they are on the celestial equator that way so and all the stars will be moving in the diurnal paths parallel to the celestial equator so the uh, if wherever you have say if you are at uh, say cochin 11 degrees what you have to do is you are you have to draw a great circle that is perpendicular to your um, north celestial pole ncp north that means it will be going 11 degrees towards the south that way because uh, from horizon pole star is 11 degrees up in the sky so uh, the same thing if you uh, the zenith is your topmost point horizon is your bottom 0 uh, degrees one so if you shift this one by 11 degrees this will also shift by 11 degrees so you are at that this will be 90 degrees so celestial equator will be 11 degrees away from the topmost point that way so for every place your pole pole star will be at a different altitude and uh, uh, the, the celestial equator also will be going so many degrees towards the south and then from the celestial equator you, you have to measure how much the star is away either towards north celestial pole or towards the south celestial pole so all the stars will have a declination either positive or negative so here declination is uh, a fixed thing but our angle is not fixed because the meridian keeps changing depending upon the longitude of the place 75 degrees will have a different meridian and he will have a different hour angle for an object and uh, for say a 75 degrees person will have one hour hour angle east if you go to uh, say 90 degrees the hour angle will become zero because 15 degrees it has moved and it will be on the meridian and if you go to 105 degrees it will be one hour in the west so that way our angle keeps varying with the the position longitude of the place and declination is a fixed one declination is okay you can tell because that depends upon the uh, that depends that is in reference to the 
celestial equator if celestial equator is uh, changing with reference to celestial equator you will get the point how much it is so that way our angle and celestial equator is one coordinate system horizontal coordinate system it's known as so here i can show you now this one see this is one suppose uh, you are at uh, equator at equator what happens the your axis will be totally not the celestial pole pole star will be on the horizon pole star will be on the horizon then all the circles now your celestial equator will be from uh, the equator to that zenith it will be passing through the zenith celestial equator and then all the diurnal paths or uh, that is the uh, apparent paths of the stars in the sky they are all perpendicular so all the objects they go up and go down that means they go in a straight path all the objects they are uh, they rise in the east they are there for 6 hours in the east and 6 hours in the west so this is at north pole at north pole what happens the pole star is on the top your celestial equator becomes your horizon and all the circles will be moving uh, uh, parallel to the uh, pole star that is uh, so parallel to the equator perpendicular uh, to the pole star and they are parallel to the equator so here you can see the stars do not rise and they do not set they will be going at uh, if you go to north pole or south pole all the constellations they will be just moving in the sky they are going they don't rise and set yeah in between latitudes we have some objects that um, uh, that are uh, that uh, are visible for more time and some objects will be visible for less time the stars that are having the negative declination will be uh, visible for less time the stars that are having very high positive declination that means uh, close to pole star they are having uh, uh, they are visible for more time it is not necessary that all the stars are visible for only 12 hours the one with them which are having more northern declination they are visible for more time and one with more negative declination they are visible for less time in mid latitudes this is okay yes now applying see uh, again we are going into the celestial sphere relation there is a relation between our angle and declination we have to take this circle pzx so as i said one is our angle h one is a here is put 360 minus a or the declination the bottom you can see from equator it is del delta it is so from the top it comes to 90 minus delta and altitude is a so z will be 90 minus a so the relation cos z as i said z is 90 minus a the relation between phi phi is the latitude of the place del is the declination of the star z is the zenith distance of the star h is the hour angle so you find that cos z is equal to sin phi sin del plus or oh there is plus not equal to plus cos phi cos del cos h similarly with this if you know the zenith distance of the star you know the declination you can if you know latitude you can get our angle or if you know our angle and phi and zenith distance you can get declination that way or declination of the star is cos phi cos h plus cos phi sin z cos a here see 
h is the our angle of the star when the object is on the meridian the our angle becomes zero okay when h becomes zero what happens cos zero cos zero is one so your cos z will become sin phi sin del plus cos phi cos del or you can say that cos z is equal to cos phi minus del okay cos a minus b is equal to sin a sin b plus cos a cos b that formula if you apply what happens is cos z will be equal to cos phi minus del and then cancelling cos on both the sides you get z is equal to phi minus del this is a very very important relation for objects that are on the meridian that means when an object is on the meridian the zenith distance of that object is equal to latitude of that place minus declination of the star here i tell you two things just let me take break of one minute see this equation z is equal to phi minus del here phi is the latitude of the place z is the zenith declination of the star z is zenith distance del is declination so when you take uh, you might have seen that uh, many of the planetariums or Uh, those uh, amateur astronomers uh, astronomy associations that are there in the south or that are there between 0 and 23 and half degrees they do this experiment of no shadow day no shadow day means what sun is directly overhead sun is directly overhead means what z is zero when z becomes zero what happens your phi will be equal to declination okay so the sun's declination keeps moving from uh, zero to plus 23 and then it comes back to zero and then to minus 23 and then to back to zero so when the declination of the sun is Uh, say 11.5 degrees that means at cochin the phi minus del becomes zero and on that day sun will be on zenith and then you will have sun is on zenith means the topmost and the, so the no shadow day how no shadow days are fixed if you know the latitude of the place if you know the declination of sun for any given date you can know on what day you are the declination will become to equal uh, will become equal to the phi latitude and that will be your no shadow day in fact uh, this is possible mainly between 0 to 23 and half degrees because sun's maximum declination is 23.5 so that means so from 0 uh, or from 8 degrees say kanyakumari in india to say bhopal ratlam these are some places uh, which pass through the tropic of cancer and there these are the places where at 0 degrees equator sun will go more uh, it it happens on two days that is on march 21st and September 21st, second 22nd. That is when the declination of sun is zero. Whereas for 11 degrees, it happens on two days. Uh, uh, again, it happens on two days. Uh, that is, it going from zero to 23.5, and then in between you have 11.5, and again uh, going from 23.5 to zero. So one day it will be between March. Uh, and uh, uh, it, i think march april and another date will be somewhere uh, 
after that is uh, this uh, uh, june to september in between august or so so august september it will be one date and then march april will be another date so two dates our planetarium will uh, do that no shadow day experiment and all that how it is possible is with relation with this relation z is equal to phi minus del you need not depend upon planetarium or so you if you know the declination of the sun and the latitude of the place you can simply do it then another thing one experiment can be done see zenith distance is phi minus del zenith distance will be minimum when the object is on the meridian because they rise in the east set in the west and they keep going higher and higher into the sky and the zenith distance because the altitude becomes maximum or zenith distance becomes minimum when the object transits so when the object is on the meridian the zenith distance is minimum so what you can do is you can keep observing that object for long time and you can note time note down at what time the zenith distance is minimum once you know the zenith distance is minimum at that particular note down the particular time and then i will tell you the next step that time will be equal to the, your local sidereal time and with that you can calculate the longitude hour of your place also these are some of the experiments you can do okay see this is again about the hour circle and declination the declination is uh, with reference to the equator hour circle is with reference to the local meridian lha is nothing but local hour angle hour angle is always local because it depends upon the local meridian yes so even these coordinates are not enough for us we need one more standard universal coordinate system so how it comes is okay before that we need to see another thing that sun the earth is tilted on its axis how much is the tilt it is 23 and half degrees so 23 and half degrees is the tilt because of the tilt what happens our equator is also tilted and the sun moves in a different path around the earth from to the earth it up from earth it appears as if sun is moving in the sky so apparent path of sun around the earth is known as ecliptic okay ecliptic the place uh, in fact eclipses take place on the ecliptic so the word uh, eclipse has come derived from ecliptic so uh, ecliptic is the apparent path of the sun around the earth and this ecliptic is tilted 23.5 degrees to the equator how you can find this tilt this again there are many experiments one can easily do you can just shadow experiments if you do we all we all have seen the shadows of ourselves but we have never observed how the shadow what shadow tells us the shadows also they whisper they are known as whispering shadows like suppose the shadow is there you find that during the day time when the sun rises the shadow is very long and as the time passes the shadow becomes small and uh, when the sun is on the meridian the shadow will be zenith distance will be minimum shadow will be minimum and then again the length of the shadow keeps increasing it moves from uh, before transit shadow was in the west and now later on the shadow will be in the east and sun will be in the west so this shadow 
one thing is that we know our shadow it keeps becoming smaller and smaller as time passes in noon it will be small uh, shortest and then again it increases but what about the shadow on different dates have you observed that the shadows in winter are much longer at say noon time than the shadows that what you see in summer so the shadows also tell a lot about uh, the in, uh, you can find out the inclination of the earth with the help of observing our own shadows if you see the shadow you keep a stick or something say vertical and for one year you keep observations you find that uh, the length of the the angle that it makes uh, that means the shadow you have the shadow you have the stick length and with that if you find out the angle that is height of the sun above the horizon or the zenith distance whatever the angle that it makes will be changed by 47 degrees in an year okay so 47 degrees change is in is there 47 degrees means sun is going 23 and half degrees to one side and 23 and half degrees to another side because of this shadow length 47 degrees difference we can say that earth is tilted by 23 and half degrees it is very easy to say find out the tilt of the earth's axis you don't need any rocket there is no rocket science involved in this only by observing the tilt of the uh, this uh, observing the shadows for one particular year you can tell how much the earth is tilted in fact even you can tell that earth is moving in an elliptical orbit all these things you can tell by observing shadows if earth is moving on in, in a circular orbit then what happens the speed of uh, earth will remain same in the orbit like a plus second law states that equal it covers equal areas in equal intervals of time that means when it is close to sun it will be moving faster when it is far from the sun it will be moving slower so if it is moving faster then um, the time that it reaches on meridian will be different and then if it is reaching slower it will be different so it will not be daily at 12 you will get exact noon so all these things you can also uh, talk about the ellipticity nature of the earth this is a simple experiment you can do with shadows shadows tell a lot so with the help of the shadows you can find out that the earth is tilted 23 and half degrees so now you have a celestial equator that is uh, uh, perpendicular to the north and south and then you have an ecliptic ecliptic is 23 and half degrees tilted with the earth's equator uh, celestial equator so this equator and ecliptic cut at two points they are known as equinoxes vernal equinox and autumnal equinox vernal equinox yeah two points are there vernal means actually that is the arrival of spring spring season spring equinox you can say second is the autumnal equinox so this is the path here you can see a beautiful picture where you have a celestial sphere celestial sphere is there on the top a celestial equator is there instead of a horizon so equator the topmost point is north celestial pole bottom is south celestial pole to that it is tilted 23 and half degrees and 23 and half degrees is the ecliptic and if you draw again another pole ecliptic pole also you get so these two earth is in the center and these two cut at two points known as vernal equinox gamma point it's also known as first point of aries and autumnal equinox so this is the path of the sun so uh, equator from equator 
towards ncp if any object is there that is no it has a positive declination and then bottom it has negative declination the difference yeah you can see winter solstice okay that is about the seasons if i have time i will tell but um, this is uh, yes so equinoxes are there then in between you have winter solstice down and summer solstice so it is cutting the point where equator ecliptic cut is known as equinox vernal equinox on one side and autumnal equinox on other side so there is one more coordinate it is known as right ascension right ascension of a star is measured with reference to the vernal equinox along the equator so that means uh, instead of uh, uh, this it is very similar to longitude in longitudes we take greenwich meridian as the one a uh, standard one and everything is where is in uh, reference to the uh, greenwich meridian here we have vernal equinox as the point and if you draw from north celestial pole to south celestial pole via vernal equinox the right ascension at that point is zero and then to this end it, it is measured in hours 0 to 24 hours so you can say zero this extreme will be 6 hours then again autumnal equinox it will be say that side it will be 12 hours then here 18 hours and then again back to zero so there are two coordinates of any object one is yeah uh, th this you can see uh, declination negative minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 and then vernal equinox uh, ra and dec uh, RA will be along the equator. The three lines what you are seeing, they are actually the right ascension coordinates. So just like two, you have uh, two points, right ascension and declination. You have like our angle and declination. Here, right ascension is measured from vernal equinox. Now, vernal equinox is a point in the sky. So all the uh, uh, right ascension of objects are measured with reference to the vernal equinox. So everything is calculated with reference to uh, the, that RA is a fixed one because even if vernal equinox, vernal equinox is moving in the sky, the other objects also will be moving and so the right ascension in, uh, of an object will remain fixed. Okay, this we have seen. Okay, duration of the day is 23 hours 56 minutes. Actually, sidereal day is 23 hours 56 minutes. That is because uh, the earth has moved one degree and with reference to the star, if it is till, uh, it is So, as I said earlier, the stars appear to rise four minutes early each night. In two weeks, the star will rise one hour early. So, then uh, some stars. So, today if you see an object rising at say 8 p.m. Next month, it will be, you can see it rising at 6 p.m. So, 12 months it will come back to the same position. That is why we find that winter stars and summer stars are different. Okay, sidereal day, 23 hours, 46 minutes, 4 seconds. Solar day is okay. The time scale that is based on Earth's rate of rotation measured relative to the fixed stars. The fixed star is the vernal equinox star uh, viewed from same location. A star seen at one position in the sky will be seen at same position on another night at same sidereal time. But since we follow the solar time, the position of the star keeps moving. Okay, we have seasons. Of course, uh, as I said, um, you have summer solstice, winter solstice, 
this is one interesting thing maybe i can go back a little and tell about this yes summer solstice what happens on vernal equinox when the as i said the earth moves uh, sun moves on ecliptic so on vernal equinox day that is march 21st the right ascension of the sun will be zero declination of sun will be zero so if you see that relation z is equal to del minus phi so declination is zero that means z is equal to phi z distance will be equal to the latitude of the place so if you are seeing from cochin sun will be on march 21st 11 and a half degrees away from the zenith that way even on others other equinox september 22nd the same will be there then when you go to summer solstice uh, the right ascension will be 6 hours and declination will be plus 23.5 at noon you can find out now the difference uh, 11.5 minus 23.5 sun will be 22.5 degrees uh, south of zenith that way you can tell and uh, uh, 20, not 22, 11 minus 23. So, say 12 degrees south of Zenith, it will be on uh, summer solstice day. Then again, it comes back here. The right ascension will be some, uh, 12 hours and declination will be 0. So, uh, you can tell again it will be equal to this z is equal to del minus phi. When it comes back here, the minus will become positive. So 11.5 plus 23.5. That will be, say 12 plus 23, 35, 35 degrees. So you will find that at one point it is 12 and another it is 35. There is a vast difference. So yeah, that way the position of the sun will be changing. Winter also, yeah, winter I have told. So here it will be 18 hours. Again, it will be coming back. So the sun also will be as the, the z is equal to del minus phi, phi keeps changing. The sun will be moving higher and lower in the sky. This explains the seasons. Why it happens? Yeah, vernal equinox, first day of the spring, sun rays directly fall above. So on vernal equinox day, sun, um, the, this, uh, sun, the right ascension, declination of sun is zero. So as I said, at the equator, sun will be on the topmost point. And if you are at Say 23 and half degrees, summer solstice day. At what point sun will be overhead? You can make out. Uh, that is when uh, uh, z is equal to 0, del should be equal to phi. Phi is, uh, uh, del is 23.5. So phi should be 23.5. So that 23.5 is the line as I said passing through Bhopal, Ratlam, this area. So on June 21st, on uh, at noon, at 23.5 degrees latitude, sun will be directly overhead. That is the reason it is known as Tropic of Cancer. Many years back, sun was in the Cancer and so it's known as Tropic of Cancer. What happens between uh, tropics that is 0 to 23.5 degrees, Sun will be on zenith two days in a year. At 23.5, it will be only on one day of the year. If you cross 23.5, sun will be never on zenith. Sun will be always on the south. You cannot see sun in the north. So these are known as temperate zones and then frigid zone that is 66.5 uh, uh, that is uh, there will there will be a time where sun is not visible at all
okay this is see i told about the ecliptic how it goes uh 21 12 is winter solstice day summer solstice all this vernal equinox point okay now as i told by many years back it was in a uh, tropic of cancer so it was in cancer constellation but now but there is one more thing known as precession the third motion of the earth where the earth precesses like a top so the uh, poles are shifting and uh, it, it takes 25600 years to complete one total uh, uh, circle so this is something uh, like yesterday uh, arvin sir was telling about the zodiac and all that people asked astrology and uh, we were discussing about zodiac and some things but here is march 21st see there are 12 zodiacal constellations where you have mostly one month is given to each constellation but it really do not go like that uh, one thing as i said uh, that uh, uh, first thing when it is sun is closer to uh, this earth is closer it will be moving to sun it will be moving faster when it is far it will be moving slower so because of that also the speed varies and so the entire constellation change will be different then second thing is each constellation we say is really of 30 degrees but uh, 12 divided by 360 got it 30 degrees but that's not like that. Some constellations are big, some constellations are very small. And then the vernal equinox point also, because of uh, earlier it was in the first point of Aries, known as, but now the sun is no longer in Aries on March 21st. Because of precision of equinoxes, the sun has moved to Pisces. You can see Pisces, Pisces also it can be called. So. Um, March 13 to April. Now you can find that actually there are 13 zodiac constellations. Ophiuchus is one constellation, and Scorpius. Scorpius is a very big constellation, but Sun is there only from November 22nd to December 21st. That is hardly say nine days it is there. So, in some constellations, sun, uh, sun stays for more time, like in Taurus, May 12 to June 21st, 40 days it is almost. Um, uh, it all depends, some very uh, few days, 9 days in Scorpius, though so it's a big constellation. 20 days in Libra, there is one more Opicus. <coughs> Okay, so this is about the right ascension declination. So, as I said, right ascension declination are calculated with reference to the vernal equinox. Right ascension is calculated with reference to vernal equinox, and vernal equinox is 0 to 24 hours. And so, every object has a particular right ascension and declination. One that is in the south has negative declination and north has positive declination. So, like Vega star, Vega is one bright star, Alpha Lyra. So, uh, the right ascension is 18 hours 35 minutes and declination is 38 minutes, 40, 38 degrees 44 minutes. So, each star has got its own right ascension and declination. <coughs> now you need to know, yes, how uh, we, we have seen our angle, we have seen right ascension. Now you need to know, you need to know what every object has right ascension, every object has declination. They are there in the northern maps that I will be sharing with you. And now you need to know how, what stars will be visible at what time. I told uh, there is something known as sidereal time. 
Sidereal time is the hour angle of vernal equinox point. Vernal equinox. What is vernal equinox? The point where the equator and ecliptic are cutting. So that is the uh, right ascension starts from zero point. That is zero at that point and sidereal time is the hour angle of vernal equinox. So when side uh, vernal equinox is on the meridian, the sidereal time will be. Zero. So uh, the, the, the our angle will be zero, and that way you can tell the time is linked with that. The sidereal time is defined as the our angle of vernal equinox. Relation between our angle, right ascension, and local sidereal time. We need local sidereal time. That is very important yeah, because yeah. the sidereal times for Greenwich are given. In Almanac, but every place, if you see at Greenwich some star, say on the zenith, even uh, not only Greenwich, uh, like you are seeing from Cochin, it will not be at the same point in the sky for a different observer. So uh, you need to know the exact sidereal time. Local sidereal time is the hour angle of vernal equinox at that local place. That is very important. So, our angle of a star is local sidereal time minus right ascension of the star. If you know the find out that you have the right ascension of the star, if you find out the local sidereal time, you get the our angle of the star. Or in other terms, if our angle of the star is zero, if the star is on the meridian, then what happens? The hour angle is zero. If the hour angle is zero, then local sidereal time will be equal to the right ascension of the star. Every star has got the right ascension of its own. So, if you calculate the local sidereal time for your place, then at that time the stars which are having the right ascension of that local sidereal time will be on the top. Of course, little complicated. Let me not become Swami Nityananda. <laughs> Let me put it in this way again. See, our angle of a star is local sidereal time minus right ascension. Simply, if the object is on the meridian, star is on the meridian, your local sidereal time will be equal to the right ascension. So what you have to do is you calculate your local sidereal time. So all the stars have got the northern maps. They have got right ascension and declination. If you see a celestial sphere, all the objects they have a right ascension and declination. So suppose you calculate the local sidereal time. It comes out to be say eight hours. That means the objects, the stars that are having eight hours will be on your local meridian and the stars that are from eight to six hours less, two to eight hours will be on the west of meridian and eight to six hours more that is 14 hours, eight to 14 hours will be on the east of meridian. So that way you can find out what star will be visible meridian. So, sidereal time as I said is defined as the hour angle of the vernal equinox. March 21st is a vernal equinox day, we know that very well. So, March 21st, when will be sun is, uh, sun is in the vernal equinox day means sun is at vernal equinox. And when will be sun on meridian assume that at well noon so at well noon on march 21st the sidereal time is 0 hours 0 minutes okay so sidereal time changes by 4 4 minutes per day on april 1st it will be 0 hours 40 minutes now at well noon it is you want to observe this in the night. 
go to just at seven hours this side. So on April first at seven p.m. sidereal time will be seven hours forty minutes. So at seven thirty p.m. I am removing the ten minutes just for simplicity. At seven uh, thirty p.m. on April first it will be eight p.m. Once you know April first. You can calculate for May first will be 10 p.m. June first will be 12 p.m. July will be 14 p.m. That way, that is one way of calculating. Uh, but there is another way. I have calculated the local sidereal time at a given place. What I have done is uh, for today I have calculated. Okay, February twenty second, eight p.m. What will be the sidereal time at our place where Jayant Babu is sitting? That is Kodi Kode, or yeah, I think it's pronounced in that way. I have tried a lot to pronounce. So uh, Kodi Kode, huh? Kodi Kode, Kodi Kode. Yes. Okay, Kodi Kode. So at Kodi Kode, longitude is. I have taken longitude here. We don't need latitude. Latitude is required to find out the position of that object uh, for knowing the zenith distance. Okay, where you require declination and also the uh, latitude of the place. Z is equal to del minus phi. Here, what we require is right ascensions. So. Here the longitude is 75 degrees 46 minutes. So if you convert it to hours, it will be five hours three minutes east. So February 22nd at 8 p.m. So what I have written is IST is 8 p.m. So uh, that is 20 hours. So the difference with universal time 5.5 we deduct. It comes to 14 hours 30 minutes. Then This is from Indian ephemeris I have taken. Uh, I have sidereal time is given for all the dates. Almanac is there. Indian ephemeris. I will be sharing it with you. So sidereal time you can take it for that particular date on February twenty second is ten hours seven minutes. So sidereal time for fourteen hours thirty minutes UT is. If you add that, it comes to 24 hours 37 minutes. Then you have to add the longitude of the place in hours, 5 hours 3 minutes, because we are not standing exactly at 82.5 degrees longitude. We have to see, verify the position of stars as per our longitude, not as per. The standard time longitude. Standard time is taken only for our reference. That's all. Uh, to have a, a uniform time all over the country, we use the standard time. In fact, the time, this time, how we tell? Like we uh, right now, the time may be say 4 p.m. or so. Oh my God, it's 4:30 almost. So the time, how we tell is. 4:30 p.m. means it is four and a half hours from the meridian. So four and a half hours from the meridian means it is not four and a half at your place. It's already five and a half at say places in northeast, <coughs> and maybe three and a half at places in uh, uh, west, somewhere in Gujarat. But we need a standard time. Otherwise, if we tell the local time, every place will have different timings. So to standardize that, we have taken 82.5 degrees as longitude, and with reference to that, we tell the time. But for observing, to know the exact hour angle of the star, to know the position of the star, you need to know <coughs> for any given place. So the longitude of that place is to be added again. That will be actually the difference. 5.5 minus this one, 27 minutes difference is there. Quite a long it is. So at 8 p.m. <coughs> you got this. 5 hours 3 if you add. 
you get 29 hours 40 minutes and again anything more than 24 you can again reduce that number so 5 hours 40 minutes you get is the sidereal time local sidereal time at 8 pm at your place so once you get that what i did 22nd february at 8 pm is 5 hours 40 minutes first march at 8 pm 6 20 <coughs> First March at 7.30 will be 5.50. You can round it off. Actually, you have to round it off because if you see here, as I said, side area time changes by 4 minutes per day. This 4 minutes per day doesn't mean that as the day ends, it will jump to the 4 minutes difference. It is a 4 minutes per day is 24 hours is 4 minutes to 40 seconds. So it comes to 10 seconds per hour. So that also, in fact, 20 hours have passed. 20 hours means 220 seconds. So the, these are all small corrections. When we really go for telescopic observations, we do these things. But for general, it is OK. So you will find. So at 1st March at 7.30 PM, it is 6 PM. On April, it is 8 PM. May, it is 10 PM. That way, once you do the side real time, uh, this part I will be sharing it with you. But uh, these things, if you remember, points to remember that as I have said earlier, side real time at 0 hours UT is this much. And if you really remember this one, you will know what objects are there in the sky. See, not on maps, if you see. On 22nd February at 8 pm, stars with 5 hours 40 minutes RA will be on the meridian. So, 8.30 pm with 6 hours RA on the meridian. As I said, the first point is Pisces. So, Pisces has 0 hours RA, then Aries has 2 hours RA. Taurus, if you remember all the 12 constellations in sequence, Taurus has 4 hours RA. Gemini as 6 hours RA. So, Gemini will be on the meridian and 0 to 6 hours RA will be in the uh, west of meridian and 6 to 12 hours RA will be in the east of meridian. 0 hours object will be setting, 12 hours object will be rising. So, you can find 0 is what? Pieces. Pieces is setting in the sky and Virgo is rising. So that way, and when the object is on the meridian, Z will be declination minus latitude. So you have the declination of all the stars. You can make out what star will be visible. Suppose you have like, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, say Cochin, 11 degrees is the latitude. You have some stars like minus 80 to minus 90 degrees declination stars they will not be visible at all and some stars which are between 80 to 90 degrees declination they are always visible so that way the circumpolar stars also you can tell what they are so here see uh, this is the these are the northern maps so 0 to 24 hours is the right ascension and here you have the declination okay um, uh, uh, there is a Milky Way also, so in between that ecliptic is there. So you can see maps 0, 1, 2, all that. Northern maps are there, it is nothing but a globe. So uh, uh, with the help of that, you can tell this already I have told you. So what stars will be visible at what time? This side area time is very, very helpful to you. Suppose you want to do observations, you have some object which you want to observe and you know that, uh, that because of 4 minute shift, the, some of the objects that are there in the, uh, the sky in January, the same objects won't be visible in July. And also <coughs> you need to know if you want to go for observations, normally your telescope time will be given from evening say 6 pm to morning 5 or so so you need to know uh, if you want to do maximum observations you want to know when that object is rising 
otherwise you go at 6 pm and you see that some object is there uh, just two hours in the west of uh, horizon and uh, that will be setting after two hours so what will you be doing you have to do your planning what are the objects that you have to observe so how you plan is you know the uh, right ascension you calculate the sidereal time uh, of course the telescope will automatically calculate and it will do everything but before that we need to plan our things that what object we will be observing so whether it will be visible in the sky or not all these things uh, by having the right ascension of an object and for a given date and for given that place you try to calculate the longitude you try to calculate the sidereal time and with the help of the sidereal time you can tell the hour angle of the star and whether the star is how many degrees if the hour angle is minus 6 that will be excellent because minus 6 to 0 and 0 to plus 6 you get some 10 hours of time for observations so if the hour angle is say uh, already it has crossed the meridian and it is plus 2 that means you have only 3 4 hours for observation and of course see one another thing is if the objects declination also you have to see and uh, uh, this the telescope won't directly go to the horizon and it will observe at certain degrees say 15 degrees or so the atmosphere also will be very bad so for seeing and uh, you cannot uh, you will not be able to do the observation so all these things uh, you need to plan for observing the objects so sidereal time is very very important thing if you really want to uh, know about the star maps the star maps have fixed coordinates right ascension and declination so convert the uh, with the right ascension you get the Uh, the, I mean, with the uh, this uh, local sidereal time, if object is on the meridian, you get. Or if you want to see the other object, you can get the hour angle, how much it is, and with that you can do the observations. Sidereal time is a very very essential thing for observations. Okay, these are seven uh, circumpolar stars. So declination greater than 90 minus latitude. they are circumpolar as i said uh for uh, cochin 90 minus 11 is 80 so if it is between 80 to 90 the stars are circumpolar they are always visible okay these are again uh, what i have shown earlier at the equator how it will be equator now okay now we understood the declination part so earlier we have seen they are all moving parallel but now if you see the picture you find that positive declination are above the horizon negative declination are below the horizon so now if you go to say poles or pole and try to do the observations the objects with negative declination will not be visible at all so if you see equator ecliptic or a zodiac uh, or uh, constellations that are on the ecliptic six of the constellations will certainly have negative declination okay those six constellations will not be visible at all if you go to poles only half the sky with positive declination will be visible if you go to the south pole the negative declination stars will be visible and the positive one won't be visible in between positives and negatives are visible okay see these are two more co coordinate systems are there uh, what we have seen is the equatorial coordinate system with right ascension and declination here you have the ecliptic coordinate system because the ecliptic coordinate system is uh, the mainly most of the planets are uh, you find on the ecliptic so this coordinate system in which uh, uh, lambda and beta they are the ecliptic coordinates they are taken with reference to the ecliptic and not with reference to equator vernal equinox is the cutting point and uh, there is a transformation again if you have right ascension and declination you want to have 
equator ecliptic coordinates then the lambda beta that relation is there a very similar one is there for galactic coordinate system also that means if you are going outside the galaxy and then want to if you are doing galactic observations normally we take sun as the center and then um, use these coordinate systems l and b where galactic longitude and galactic latitudes so sun is in the center in galactic coordinate system and uh, yes these are again some transformations okay. you can go through this but normally for observations okay now you can you know how to locate and map the objects in the night sky from solar system to the edge of the universe any object that is there in the sky you can find out how to identify so i stop here i just i can see you all of you if i yeah the this yes ah so, uh, we ask the participants if you have any questions you can uh, ask the speaker because this is one of the as i have told you in the beginning that uh, this is one of the important topics and uh, the thing is that uh, uh, so many things which are normally taught in a, in a semester uh, actually uh, has been compacted and put in 2 hours uh, so it would be amount of information which has been transferred maybe more but uh, well that can't be helped because uh, we have to just give you an overview and if you are interested you have to yourself uh, delve into the topic and uh, learn it Uh, relearn it uh, step by step so this is the overview of uh, so everything the uh, one thing you, which uh, you may appreciate is that uh, whatever is seen uh, in the sky they can be quantized its position can be obtained and its dynamics can be studied so that is one of the take home point i think uh, dr ravi kumar kiran has given you yes. uh, and the time is also which we take it for example Uh, in our clock, the time and uh, actually the motion of the sun, time—they are also uh, not exactly the same thing. That also was conveyed to you. So, apart from this, if there are any questions, please go ahead and ask. I think uh, you can do one thing that uh, whatever slides you find that which is non-copyrighted materials are there, you can make a PDF and post it in the. Uh, yeah, that whatsapp group which uh, uh, we are you, we have there. all the participants are there yes yes i will certainly post them uh, there is a question that how uh, how one can do virtual observation more rigorously apart from the things one can do with software like stellarium see virtual observations Uh, you can do the observations of sun virtual observation see uh, if you really want to study inside the stars or that you need a telescope you need a photo you need to do photometry all these things but uh, you can do uh, certain things if you keep a small photometer you can find out the magnitudes of the star by the number of photons by photon count system i think ayuka has developed few earlier with that you can find out the magnitudes of the star here if you want to do yes i was telling one experiment about uh, observations about uh, yes if the you can draw, draw the graph and you can see at what time the zenith distance of an object becomes minimum when that object because the zenith distance of the object becomes minimum that means what this is one experiment that means that the object is on the meridian okay when the object is on the meridian yeah, that will be equal to the local sidereal time when the object uh, because ra will be equal to lst try to calculate ist with reference to that lst go backward calculations and do 
so you can in fact use this for doing the clock correction okay these kind of experiments can be done with a theory light or with a system where you can find out the altitude of the star then uh, you can do sun experiments plenty are there if you really do the observations of as i said shadow stick you can find out on march 21st and uh, another date september 22nd the rising point and setting point will be exactly east if you observe the same why if the rising point of the sun from your window you will find that it will be shifting so you can see how much shift is there similarly uh, if you find out the zenith distance of sun at the time of transit for one long year you can uh, find out the tilt of the earth's axis these are the daytime experiments moon also can be observed in a similar way suppose you observe the moon after how many days it will come back from amavasya to amavasya how many days yeah, it will take some 29.5 days the synodic period of the moon the where that is uh, where the sidereal with reference to star if you see 27.3 or of course you cannot say 27.3 days because 0.3 can be somewhere in the daytime also but if you do continuous monitoring you can tell all this so some small observations can be done then analemma of the sun is there this is a very good experiment as i said if the earth is moving in a complete circular orbit every day at 12 noon say 12 noon will be for 82.5 degrees longitude varanasi kakinada and some places but uh, some other place lay, say yours is 5 hours 3 minutes so there will be a difference of 27 minutes so 27 minutes later you will find that uh, at the same time the point should be there the sun on the meridian find that it will be keep shifting one eight will be forming that is analemma of the sun where you can find out the ecliptic uh, the elliptical nature of the earth's orbit you can interpret these things by observing objects in the sky that is this is the thing you may not do the exact calculations but interpretations are possible yes i think uh, one aspect of the question was that uh, whether uh, any astronomy experiments or observation can be done virtually in the sense that by online or something uh, that was what uh, uh, okay uh, online so, uh, online observation may be uh, like virtual observatory type of thing uh, if uh, if you get a data uh, i don't know yeah see there is data but it uh, it all depends on uh, maybe citizen science citizen science projects can be of some help yeah the projects it can be done you can uh, in fact uh, uh, i will be sharing the ephemeris you can try to uh, find out uh, how the sidereal time is changing and what is all that you can really do some with the data that is available you can do but it you need to know many things like right ascension declination many things you need to know prior to that it's not just keeping that and trying to do uh i don't have right now all those but it is possible certainly yeah dr shailaja must be having these things yeah 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 any other question Okay, so if there is no other question, I think uh, I will thank uh, Dr. Ravi Kiran for having given such an extensive and wonderful talk and covered a vast topic. Uh, and he will also share because I think people have to uh, just see it once again because so much things are there. So we uh, he will also share some resource if possible. You can share it so that uh, they can also participants can know a little more about the. Uh, solution sphere and all those things so i thank uh, dr ravi kiran for uh, coming here and giving the talk and uh, i conclude uh, the session formally here
and uh, last but not the least those who have not given the attendance today registered participants please give the attendance because that is mandatory as for the hotel uh, talks so that's all and we meet tomorrow again what is the scope of astronomy after msc in physics any answer yes uh, you you have to do if you want to do research then you need to write that uh, joint entrance and all that and get qualified it is very good that you have physics as background you can go to ayuka iia and all this and uh, you need to pass the exam it is scope but only thing you need to qualify and uh, do research and uh, you can join premier institutes I think just is there which entrance yeah, that just is there. You can use gate also. Gate also. Yes, these are the things. Physics is physics and little mathematics. With that, you can uh, yes write those exams. You can see uh, their uh, qualifications. Yeah, gate just uh, net. I'm not sure about net qualification for this, but just is the main one where all these all the <coughs> Premier Institute series, IIA, IUCA, TIFR, they all will uh, take the base if you have a good JEST score, qualify that. Yeah. So, okay, so I thank the speaker once again and we conclude the session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jen.